Hello everybody, welcome to the second Big Doug podcast. Uh, we are going to be talking about YouTube and content today. We've got Charlie here, uh, Charlie Dear White uh, from his YouTube channel. And we're going to be talking about the power of content and how you know people can be really use and influence that to um, to make a, make a big difference. Um, welcome, thank you very much for joining us, Charlie. Good, good to be here, Luke, good to be here. Um, so Charlie, just talk to us a bit about who you are, what you do. Yeah, well, I set up my channel um, about six years ago now. And the reason I set it up was, like happens with so many of us, things were, we, in the day job I ran a soft furnishings business and to be brutally honest with you, I was getting a bit burnt out with it. Um, been doing it for a long time. It's going quite well, but I just wanted another challenge in my life. And my little sister worked for, works for a company, a sort of talent management company where this sort of thing happens a lot. And I've had a drill in my hand since I was a kid, basically. Um, I put a new front door in a friend's house once in London, and he goes, what, where do you get all your tools from? And I said, well, what do you mean? I got them as presents when I was growing up. And he looked at me aghast, and he was like, you got tools for presents? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And to me, that's totally normal. But to him, it was a really weird thing. So I've had a tools in my hand since I was a kid. And it's all credit to my little sis, because she said to me, um, why don't you set up a YouTube channel? And it was like one of those sort of thunderbolt moments. Oh, yeah. And I just thought, yes, that's what I need. Um, and the other thing about it, a lot of YouTube um, creators really spon really struggle for content. Yeah. It's one of the hardest things. And you can see it on channels where yeah. they do a great video and then next week they do something. You think, where did you get the idea for that from? That's, you know. um, but the, the brilliant thing for what I'm doing, uh, well, there's a couple of things really. The first one is the old cottage we live in. Um, I haven't had a huge amount of money over the years to get tradesmen in to do the jobs, part point one, but point two, I want to do them myself. Yeah. And it's an old Victorian cottage and things are going wrong or needing to be fixed the whole time. So actually my issue is this anxiety that I've got 30, 40 videos that are already filmed sitting in my, on my hard drive waiting to be edited and I just can't get them out quickly enough. Yeah. Um, and also it's gone from the early days when I'd put videos out with loud cheesy music in the background on a permanent loop and everyone was saying, love your stuff, but please turn the music <laughs> off. And sadly, I can't do that on the videos I've launched now, but every video I do, I strive to make better, more, more informative than the last one, I guess. So um, yeah, that's a challenge, getting the videos out there and um, on, I hope I try to do them on a sort of weekly basis. But um, that's one thing. But the second thing is we've heard a lot in the press over the last 10 years that DIY as an art is, is it's a sort of dying discipline. People are getting tradesmen in to do, to do the jobs around the house. But I think over the last few years, we've all been struggling in this, in this almost seemingly permanent recession we're in and then the problems with Brexit and stuff. And so a lot of people are turning more to doing DIY themselves in their houses just because of the financial yeah, sure. imperative of needing to get stuff done cheaply. They can't afford to get people in to do. And I was just obsessed with the idea that, I mean, my, the, the sort of mantra on my channel is making DIY doable. Um, I think people have become quite scared of DIY. You hear about DIY disasters, and but actually it's not something to be scared about. And if you do a job and you do it half decently it's so empowering you have that fist pump moment i mean i do now call me sad but you know if i build a <laughs> cupboard system or something and i go into the room i say yes you know i managed to do that and i have i'm humbled by the amount of people who send me p pictures of things that they've created based on watching videos on my channel and i never imagined that all i wanted was to try and get out there that diy is something that we can all do um uh, with the right instruction and that's again that's the power of YouTube I mean I had a hard drive I bought a, I thought a high spec gaming laptop couldn't work out why memory wise it was totally full and it suddenly dawned on me that I had an SSD a solid state drive yeah. where the operating system was and then and then a spinny disk that had a terabyte of, of sort of um, storage and suddenly realized that actually the SSD drive needed replacing I, I don't have a lot of IT skill um, but also I didn't know of any local IT companies that could sort it out for me. And I went online and sure enough, there was somebody showing you how to swap out an SSD drive in your laptop yeah. with 
right down to the details of how to clone the old drive to put the new drive back in and stuff. And I did it and it worked. And so that we all do it. You know, I'm, YouTube. I'm a benefiter from YouTube as much as the people who watch my channel are. And it's 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 a it's a fantastic um, enabler. And it's something yeah. that people are really, are really excited about. I mean, I know it's run by Google, but <laughs> at the end of the day, it's it's giving people so much information and the ability to do things that they would never have been able to take yeah. on if it hadn't been it's for empowering for a lot of people yeah so talk to me about how some of your most successful videos well um the most successful video is a siliconing video um which has over i think 1.9 million views now which is pretty pretty mind-boggling to think about really and that all stemmed from a video i did uh i did a siliconing video just on a um, a pedestal wash basin unit in the in our bathroom that I made and it was a fairly straightforward thing with a sheet of granite um, a sheet of a sheet of marble um, and then a little back stand and it was a very simple thing to silicon and I did it the way I often do it but I had a very basic forming tool I got not so much trolled but I got somebody who was quite animated about the fact that a it was very simple so any anyone can do it and he questioned the process of, um, of of the way I was doing it, and and uh, we we ended up having quite a long conversation, and he actually suggested I check out the Kramer Fuji profiling tools that they use a lot on, on the continent, particularly around Germany and stuff. So I did a video on that. I I said to him, right, I don't agree with you. I'm going to do a video. I'm going to prove you wrong, and um, I've got a hand glazed Marlborough tile bathroom shower area that I'm doing soon and it, it, there's there isn't a more difficult surface to silicon than that so I'm going to do it with the with my technique and I'm going to send you a copy of the video and I did it and he never replied and, the, and, <laughs> and the, then 1.9 million and views and later, 1 .9 million views later. <laughs> and so there's that one and there's a knife sharpening video I did which has um which I watched last night which you watched last night fascinating but I mean the reason I did that was because again nobody knows it, it's really difficult to sharpen your knives well yeah. and there are these terrible kits on amazon that yeah. you draw your knife across and you can see the shards of metal falling on the yeah. table so by six months later you've got no knife left so i wanted to find the holy grail a professional knife system that anyone can use that can give you a professional grade sort of uh, edge on your knife and um and that was that the video on the lansky system which is great because i mean yeah. i love cooking I've got yeah. global knives, yes, which, are which are lovely, expensive. Yeah. Yes, and you don't want to trash those on a. And you can, tr and they they're gonna lose their sharpness. Yeah, but you don't want to ruin what is effectively a ninety-eight pound knife. Yeah, yeah. By buying, quite frankly, an awful knife yeah. sharpener on Amazon for two ninety-nine. Exactly. You know. Exactly, and it's like everything. You could you can use a sharpening stone, but you need a bit of skill and ex expertise to, and and you need a lot of practice on those. And we haven't got that in our lives. You know, you want. You want to sharpen these. You want to sharpen quickly and move on because yeah. you, you're like we're, our lives are so full of everything we're having to do. So uh, it's not perfect. It's a bit of a faff to set up, and it doesn't work so well on longer knives. It's more built really for your sort of outdoor adventurers and people with their pocket knives and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, that's that's been an interesting. So one. for everybody listening, why would they go on your channel? What is it that you kind of would help them with? I think I think what people like about my channel is. I'm just like them. I'm a DIYer. I don't blind people with sophisticated tools. Um, I use a sort of middle of the range Ryobi brand power tool, which the tool snobs out there give me criticism for sometimes. But you know, they are just that. They're tool snobs. It's a great system, and it's good for. It's accessible for DIYs. We want. We all want value for money tools that are going to do the job for us. Yes, a Milwaukee or a Dewalt power tool is going to take a lot of grief seven days a week. But we're not using these things seven days a week. We're doing our DIY at the weekend. So my channel, I think, appeals to people who who want a DIY approach. Yeah. I haven't got a sophisticated workshop. If I'm if I'm making something, um, if I'm doing some carpentry, I'll pull out the folding workbench I made, stick it outside the garage next to the cars. And away we go, and, and that, I think that's what everyone else does. And whether it's building a cupboard door, a wardrobe door, without having to use sophisticated mortise and tenons and uh, th 
things like that I think people find really really exciting because they realize actually and that's the power of YouTube a amount of people who have said to me I've watched your video and I've thought do you know what I can do that and the thing about YouTube is you watch a video and you either decide no that's not I haven't quite got the skill set or the tools to do that or to hell with this if I buy that power tool or if I do what Charlie's just told me to do I reckon I can pull this off yeah and when the really humbling thing is the amount of people who sent photographs of cupboards, wardrobes, things they've built based on videos that I've that I've put out there. And I put the videos out there, I think, to try and get some traffic and to try and get my name out there as to, 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 to try and get interesting content out there and to show people that things could be done. But it's mind blowing to actually see people using those videos and creating stuff. And and it's humbling as well yeah. actually. So I suppose, so that's the answer to your question. I think people will find on my channel just another DIY like themselves who maybe has a bit more experience than they do. But don't forget, when I, when I moved into my first house when I was 22, 23 years old, I was quite good at carpentry, but that was it. All the other stuff I've done, like installing Velux windows, re rebuilding dormer windows, um, building uh, fences, um, insulating internal walls in the house, yeah. using sort of... Um, uh, adhesives, cement, mortar, all sorts of different systems depending on the project I'm doing. I've just learned that. Yeah. Um, so I would and say. Learned it by watching others. Learned it by watching others. And I was saying to one of your colleagues earlier on the best way to learn is to, when you, when you buy your, your first place or you move into your first apartment, the best way to, to start to um, grow your skill set is to get on and, and to do stuff. And You've got to do the research. The other thing I say on my videos is research, research, research before you start. I find the power of the subconscious is amazing. You can start reading about something, you forget about it. You pick up a bit more a couple of weeks later, you forget about it. By the time you're ready to do the job, you've learned a huge yeah, amount sure. that you don't actually appreciate. But the other thing is, if you do need to get a builder in or you get a mate in, like one of your, one of your colleagues who's getting um, a mate in this weekend to help them with some roofing, watch what they're doing. Tell them, do their, carry their tools for them. Help mix their cement like I did with my old builder mate Roger in London who taught me pretty much everything I've learned. Because that way you'll remember what they've taught you and um, it gives you the, the skills to do it yourself. Empowerment, skills and a healthy bank balance. I'm not spending out for all the uh, Well that's it, the, yeah, the but research, put research yeah, in there because that's so important. And, and, and the other thing is, you do your, your point about empowerment. There's something really healthy about DIY. You get a job done. I mean, firstly, it's healthy actually doing the work at the weekend. It gets you off the couch, gets you doing something constructive. But when you've built that thing, whatever it is, and you can have a little fist pump. I'm a bit of a saddo. I, I even fist pump when I've built things myself now. But it's, it's just that epic moment where yeah, you just think, I, that did that. Is, I did that. And not only that, this is just the start of my journey because if I can do that think what else I can yeah, do yeah absolutely and then you get all the friends around for dinner and show them what you built <laughs> exactly exactly and then your friends are in awe of it and think wow so yeah so that's it and it's been it's been a great journey for me and it's only really just started I've done a hundred and I've got about 130 videos out there and it's it's nothing like what I I mean I'm I'm I'm, I'm humbled I've had I've got so many subscribers for the number of videos I've got um it's good content that's well, why People follow you because it's good I, content. I guess. Apart from the early stuff where I've got the music on a constant loop, which I'm really embarrassed about now. <laughs> but you live you and learn, you know. Somewhere. You've got to start somewhere. You so have. where can everybody find you? They can find me on YouTube if they Google Charlie D.I. White, and that's D-I-Y-T-E. And um, they can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. But I'm going to be brutally honest with you. There aren't enough hours in the day. from YouTube. Right. There you go. My phone. Siri. Go Siri. Google's now trying to, trying to uh, jump in on the on the call, on the podcast. Uh, yeah, if I'm going to be brutally honest, at the moment YouTube is my thing. That my channel is 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 the main focus of my attention, and I'm not doing a huge amount on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You see the odd photograph, but um, I don't curate those those medias as much as I should. So the main way, main way, to, main place to find me is on YouTube. If you want to ask me a question, you can reach me by email at charlie, um, char, charlie di white at gmail.com. And uh, if you've got any questions, I'll be very happy to answer them. Yeah. And just going to jump in really quickly, which is a yeah. really interesting point that you've made. If you're a small business owner or you're somebody that's looking to replicate what Charlie's doing, actually, 
there is this misconception that you need to be everywhere and you need yeah. to be on all social media channels. Actually, what you should do is focus on doing one really well as yeah. opposed to all of them really badly. I think that's right. Everyone thinks I need to be on Facebook, I need to be on Twitter, I need to be on Instagram, I need to be on Snapchat, TikTok, YouTube. Yeah. Actually, pick your channel yeah. depending on what you want to do and do that well. Yeah, because people will find you. That's it. That's it. And 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 find it. Pick pick the channel to suit. Pick the media to suit what it is you're wanting to do. Whether you only have the time to like a lot of Instagrammers do to they post a video a day, but it's it's a quick sort of stream of consciousness, a sort of selfie type sort of format. Yeah. Um, as opposed to YouTubers who are often seen more as I don't know entrepreneur. I mean, the thing about YouTube is. Putting out a video takes a bit longer. Yeah, um, you've got to do the editing, and not to underestimate how long it takes to create that content, yeah. edit it, and get it out. Yeah, I, I would say if you're thinking of setting up a YouTube channel, fundamental thing is there are a lot of YouTube creators out there who specifically target. Um, well, there are a lot of content pro pro producers who are specifically targeting YouTube creators, and they've got some fabulous stuff out there that tells you where to start, how to get how to get started, the sort of mm. kit you need to buy. You don't need to buy expensive kit no. either, actually. I started with a JVC camcorder I bought on Amazon, I think. It might have even been secondhand. And I recently upgraded to another Panasonic camcorder, which cost a few hundred quid. But the main thing is try, concentrate on the content. The content is key to this. And try and make your videos as as polished as you can really based on what you've learned from what other people and are doing engaged yeah know. but yeah, but don't but, but don't don't worry too much about how they are because if you look at my original videos they're pretty embarrassing if i'm going to be honest <laughs> particularly with the music so and that hasn't done me to that hasn't sort of harmed harmed my channel too he much he says 122,000 subscribers it. later <laughs> that's it so just get on with it have a bit of fun get out there get started and um and see where it takes you fab well thank you for coming in charlie and if you want to check him out it's charlie di white on uh, youtube and uh, hopefully you'll get some real good inspiration with his videos yeah thank you nice to nice to have a chat cool here's to the next one guys have a good day thank you